turning point, in 1985, her first business venture was importing oak vanities. This progressed to an ownership of a factory to produce cultured marble. After a few years, Ms. Yang came to realize that there was a lack of minority contractors in Buffalo. She expanded her business to fill the need to become a take-off material supplier and general contractor. Ms. Yang took construction management classes and started a construction company from her home. She reminisces about studying construction documents and doing all the initial estimates herself. When I started out, I really don't have any family background in construction. So, so I went to ECC. I took all construction courses they offer there. And I also uh, started going to local, some of the local general contractors' office and uh, copy drawings from uh, their office and start doing takeoffs of uh, Division 10 beauty materials. Uh, and I prepare quotes and then I um, quote everybody uh, uh, and I start learning little by little the process of construction how subcontractors prepare bids, how they quote all the GCs and how do they uh, uh, coordinate uh, the uh, delivery of materials and so forth and so forth. Um, by osmosis, you know, um, and by talking to different contractors. And then I realized there's a need for uh, minority uh, contractors in Buffalo. I'm very proud of and the most proud of is my company, if you can see when you walk in my office, um, all my corporate staff are minority women of all different ages. Um, I hired them pretty much from, um, with no background. And I train them and I cross train them. I just don't tell them what to do, I tell them why how and uh, try to broaden their um, understanding of their jobs. And so um, they are all, I can pretty much uh, tell you that they are all, every one of them are excellent workers and contribute to our company. And I believe a good leader is if you can delegate and make them to give them ownership of their jobs. I have to say every one of them own their jobs and have, is dependable and is motivated. And I do reward them, not only give them annual raises uh, and good raises, also I provide them with health benefit, I provide with 401k and uh, pension plan. In the past three years, we have given them uh, at least 13 to 15% above and beyond their base pay, which I think is, uh, which set us apart, I like to think, in Buffalo. I'm proud to, to say that I have many employees who graduate from our company have started to uh, be successful in the federal contract arena. And um, being a pioneer in that area, um, my advice to um, minority or minority women is that don't be afraid, um, work hard, you don't have to have all the ducks in a row when you started out. You don't have to know everything about contracting, but you need to really uh, work hard and getting advice. And I'm more than happy to help people locally or anywhere. And I have got people coming to see me. In fact, you know, this Saturday I'm going to see another new um, federal certified 8 contractor and um, share my experience with them. But work hard, you know, is there's no other way by working hard. And um, I always tell people, the more you do, the more you learn. And the more you learn, and that's the only thing nobody can take away from you. As a result, her managerial expertise, along with her general construction knowledge, has proved to be a winning combination. Ms. Yang has built a reputation for strong oversight and professionalism in the construction world. Randon Jones has successfully completed major projects throughout New York State as well as Washington, D.C., Orlando, Atlanta, and Los Angeles. The success of her company has not gone unnoticed. 
In 2003, she was recognized as Women Making History in Erie County. Just last year, the U.S. Small Business Administration awarded Rand and Joan Enterprises with the National Award for the 8A Graduate Firm of the Year. As this month's Minority Business Spotlight, L.P. Simonelli congratulates founder and president Joan Yang on her outstanding business savvy and continued success. Hi, we're back and we're at school number 27, Hillary Park Elementary, and this is our project team. I'd like for them to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm White Curtin with L.P. Simonelli acting as the project superintendent. I'm Desiree Haywood. I am project administrator. I'm Carl Slens. I'm the project manager. Thank you all for being here today on this snowy day. Why don't you tell, Carl, start by telling us a little bit about this project, like the total project cost. Uh, this is a, a renovation and a remodeling, a new addition, uh, elementary school, kindergarten through eight, pre-kindergarten through eight, total project cost around $17 million. $17 million, great. And this is a phase three school, right? Correct. Phase three school, slated to open? April. In April, okay, right. right after spring break, somewhere around in there. You got it. Yeah. Okay, um, what are some of the challenges that you, that you and Carl have seen with just this project site, and how did the team overcome those challenges? Right at the very beginning, the foundation stage was very tricky and challenging indeed, um, because we had to remove part of the building and leave the basement underneath it. And then we had to drive piles down for the foundation system. So we had to re take out the building, cut holes in the floor, bring a pile driving rig in, drive piles down 40 feet, and then put the new building on top of it, and then add a second story. So it may sound easy to you, but try to do it out here. It's a little difficult. <laughs> yeah. And then the addition part of the building is a triangular shape and trying to get that to match up with the existing building shape was um, definitely a challenge. That's, it would take me a couple hours to explain <laughs> it, but it took many RFIs and several months to finally get the plans worked out so that the building fit where it's supposed to fit. That was probably the biggest challenge for the first two or three months we were out here. And anytime you have an existing building, just trying to break into it and meld a new addition into it is um, sometimes you can get mind boggling to get the floor elevations correct and just to get the HVAC systems to all jive together, right. it definitely gets quite challenging. Okay, Carl, you want to our, add anything? Our, our latest challenge is, is we, um, we're completing the project a little ahead of a schedule. So getting all of our contracts to um, work together at the end of the project to make sure all the work is done on a revised schedule has been quite challenging mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for us. Um, a lot of finishes that the school has requested that we do kind of extra that we've thrown in and yet not changed our schedule at all. So it's been a challenge, but all in all, we got a good team. Yes, and, we do. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's come together very nicely. Well, good. All right, now you started on this particular project in August, yes. correct? And what other project were you on prior to this one? Uh, prior to this one with Simonelli, I've done two projects. Okay. Directly before this, I was on the Mount Airy Casino and Resort project in, in Pennsylvania. Okay. And then prior to that, I was uh, working on the Steuben County Public Safety Building, which was a new jail, okay. basically, for St okay. Steuben County, New York. All right, great. Desiree, what other projects have you worked on? Uh, all Buffalo schools. Yes. I okay. worked on Project uh, School 90, the okay. Junior Science Academy. Okay. Um, and then last phase, phase two, was um, Hutch Tech. Okay. Okay, that was another notable school. Very, very yeah. Nice. How did you like it out there? It was interesting, considering I graduated from Hutch Tech. All so right. It was good able to revisit yeah the oh yeah they're doing wonderful over there too everyone's loving the school yeah it's beautiful over there what about you Mike where have you been well I've been familiar for 11 years and did several manufacturing hospitals and other public schools for the first five or six years and then for the last five years with Buffalo schools I was at school 74 37 39 and now finally 27 Okay. Now, how do all of those other schools compare to this particular project? Are there any major differences or...? Uh, the major difference is basically the shape of the building. Okay. Besides that, um, the secondary thing which is different would be the age of the building. This is actually the newest building that I've worked in, being 60s and 70s with the two um, basic structures here. 
my previous schools were built in the 30s. Okay. Where you have walls that are a foot and a half thick. Wow. So definitely a different challenge.